Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're talking about turning your iPad into your primary machine. In this episode, we're going to talk about what apps you need to make that happen. Now, of course, if you're used to using a laptop, you're going to have a bunch of apps on that that you use on a regular basis. And you're going to need to replace those apps on the iPad if you're going to make this your primary machine. Now, if you have really high-end apps like Photoshop or other video editing applications that are very pro-level, you won't be able to do that sort of thing on the iPad. If you still want to do that on the road, you'll probably want to stick with your notebook. On the other hand, the iPad is capable enough to handle most of the rest of what people do when they're on the go. Of course, there's the traditional applications like the web and email. Those things are on the iPad for sure. But there's also word processing apps, music creation apps, and even basic video editing apps if you want to use those. First of all, you're probably going to want the usual Office Suite applications. You can get Pages from Apple, which is a word processing app, for $9.99 at the App Store. As you'd expect from a word processing app, it can edit and format your text, and it can include graphics of various types. Now, Pages is capable of reading and writing Microsoft Word formats, so if you're used to using Word on your laptop, you can still use it here on Pages. You'll just have to do a conversion. Now, if you're used to using Excel on your laptop, you'll want to look at Numbers for the iPad. That's $9.99, again, from the App Store. Numbers takes care of all your spreadsheet needs, and again, it's compatible with Microsoft Excel. Now, if you want to create music on the iPad, there's GarageBand. It's a stripped-down version of what you'll find on the Macintosh computers. We did an entire series on this, so you can check that one out for more information on actually how to use GarageBand. For those who want to create their own movies, there's also iMovie for the iPad. Again, a stripped-down version of the one that you'll find on the Macintosh. It'll give you some basic editing functionality and the ability to share your videos with your friends. Again, we did an entire series on how to use iMovie for the iPad, so check out Butterscotch for more information on how to use iMovie. Now, if you have other computers elsewhere that you're still going to be using to create docs, you may want to set up Dropbox on your iPad. The Dropbox app is a free download that allows you to tap into your Dropbox account. Now, with Dropbox on your other computers, you can upload documents, and then you can retrieve them on other computers, even on the iPad. Now, at this point, unfortunately, with Dropbox, it's a one-way street for documents for most document types. If you have images, you can send those back up through Dropbox, but the other types of documents that you download through Dropbox and then edit on the iPad, you'll have to send up in a different way. Now, with a number of developers for iOS out there working on applications for both the iPhone and the iPad, there's tons of different applications out there meeting most types of application needs, including a lot of the things that you typically see on your notebook. So, for example, if you want a time-tracking application for tracking client hours, you can find it. Also, don't forget to search around through the App Store for mobile versions of apps that you already use on your laptop, and chances are they're there. App-wise, you'll find that much of what you need is already available on the App Store, making it fairly easy to turn your iPad into your main machine. Don't forget to check out the other parts in the series. We'll give you other tips on using your iPad as your main machine. And you can check out the show notes for this and the other parts in the series at butterscotch.com.